I'm Clara and I love ships and naval history. Today, I want to mention a ship of Royal Navy, which is in my opinion one of the most incredible ships in whole history, HMS Bellerophon. Her story began on a stormy day of October 1786, when the third-rate ship of the line was launched to the waters of River Medway. They named her HMS Bellerophon. Fun fact! Seamen struggled with pronouncing her name, so she was nicknamed Billy Raffian. Bellerophon needed to wait for her first battle until the third year of Revolutionary Wars. Then, on the 1st of June, 1795, Bellerophon and the rest of the Channel Fleet attempted to destroy French convoy with corn, but encountered French fleet instead. The battle, which would be called Glorious 1st of June on both sides of the Channel, ended up indecisively, but that is probably completely unnecessary information since it can be seen from the name of the battle. Because of the fact that the new tactical elements have been used there, Glorious 1st of June is now one of those iconic battles of revolutionary and Napoleonic wars. Well, back to Bellerophon. She fought bravely in that battle and nearly ended up as a floating wreck. But she was repaired and in 1798, she became a part of squadron of Rear Admiral Horatio Nelson, which was supposed to chase the enemy and destroy them before they landed in Egypt. But that didn't work out. You might remember from my video about Lofion that it took over a month before Nelson's squadron found the French fleet. But in the evening of 1st of August, HMS Bellerophon and another 12 ships found the French fleet anchored in the Bay of Aboukir. The brutal battle, which would become probably the most decisive victory in history of Royal Navy and would be called Battle of the Nile in Britain and La Bataille de Boukir in France, began. HMS Bellerophon decided to attack the biggest ship from the whole French fleet. Why not? But it was the 120 gun ship of the line called L'Orient, so I wouldn't do it. Because that ship had almost twice as much guns as Bellerophon, so their engagement couldn't end differently than with Bellerophon being just a floating wreck. Again. But again they repaired her and sent Bellerophon back to Mediterranean. Everything seems peaceful until spring of 1805, when the French fleet set sail from Toulon, merged with Spanish fleet, sailed to West Indies, then back, and after that they anchored in Cadiz. Bellerophon, with the rest of the Mediterranean fleet, which was now under the flag of Vice Admiral Horatio Nelson, he got promoted after the Battle of the Nile, said to chase them. But do you think they caught them? Obviously not, so... Mediterranean fleet needed to wait in front of the cadets until the combined French and Spanish fleet wouldn't decide to sail out. And that happened at 21st of October of that year. Both fleet met off the Cape Trafalgar, and you probably know where I'm going with this. Franco-Spanish fleet sailed in line and Nelson fleet sailed in two columns towards them, with the intention of cutting the Franco-Spanish line between vanguard and the middle of the fleet, and between middle of the fleet and the rear guard. Our dear Bellerophon was fifth in the column, which cut the enemy line between middle and the rear. She found herself under heavy fire from a French ship Lagle. As always, Bellerophon fought bravely, and also as always, she nearly turned into a floating wreck. I need to mention that Mediterranean fleet won and Nelson died in the battle and it became the most iconic battle from whole naval history. Well, back to Bellerophon, which was now an floating wreck, but she was repaired again. It was for the third time. That's not usual for a ship of Royal Navy of that time. Well, nothing was happening for a while. It was after Trafalgar, so it's kind of understandable. Bellerophon got out from the Mediterranean fleet, and in the last year of the Napoleonic Wars, she blockaded the port of Rochefort instead. And there it happened. On the 15th July 1815, she stepped into the history as the ship to which surrounded the former Emperor of France, the Napoleon Bonaparte.
Bellerophon transferred Napoleon to Sheerness, from where another ship of Royal Navy took Napoleon to his exile on the island of St. Helena. After that, her services weren't needed anymore, so she was refitted on a prison hall and became a prison for children under the age of 14 before they were departed to Australia. Hulk of Bellerophon stayed in this role until 1836, when, as most of the warship from Napoleonic times, was broken up. HMS Bellerophon might not be as iconic as HMS Victory or USS Constitution, but is definitely one of the bravest and most incredible ships of that time. The fact that she was changed into a floating wreck three times in three iconic battles and repaired again and at the end she accepted surrendering of Napoleon is just incredible story. Well, that's gonna be all for today. Resources I used will be listed down below, so you can check them out if you want to know more. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time with a biography of another interesting ship. <laughs>